At this time, I would like for us to pray for this morning's message <clears throat> titled, The Fruits of the Spirit. Let us please stand this morning. Vamos a parar de pie, hermanos y hermanas. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful this morning. We're thankful for allowing us to be here. We're thankful for this time right now to be together, to gather together, to assemble together, to fellowship together, to learn the Word of God together. I praise the Lord to encourage us, each other, with the Word of God. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord Father, that you touch each and every one of us. I pray that you touch this message. I pray for a fresh anointing over today's message, Lord Father. I pray that it, that it, that it empowers people. I pray that it that encourages them to continue hallelujah to allow the holy spirit to to help them in the fruits of the spirit hallelujah i pray praise the lord hallelujah that, that, that this message will be a blessing upon the people over there on facebook lord father i pray that that it touches each and every one i pray that it encourages i pray that, that it increases our faith hallelujah i pray that that, that your power is manifested this morning hallelujah because you say where two or three are gathered together in my name there i am in the midst of them father i pray that, that hallelujah praise the lord that no matter the number of people that are here or the number of people that are watching hallelujah i pray that you're in the midst of all of that that you're in the midst here locally that you're in the midst electronically as well hallelujah i pray father for great miracles hallelujah for great message hallelujah i pray for a for for great anointing over this message, hallelujah. I pray that your word be spelled out. I pray that your word is preached. I pray that the word is uh, uh, sanctifies them because your word is truth. Hallelujah. I pray that, that you sanctify me as I speak your word. I pray that you sanctify them as they hear the word. I pray that their faith is increased. I pray for great people. I pray that you just touch them, oh Lord, Father. That you have your way with them, oh Lord. That they learn something from this, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, hallelujah. And we give this message to you, oh Lord, to take over it, to have your way with it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <clears throat> Today I'm going to preach a message of the doctrine of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. El fruto del Espíritu Santo. El Espíritu. Amen. First let me begin this message with a question. How many of you know what the fruit of the Spirit is? How many know what it, what all of it means? To answer these questions, brothers and sisters, let us look at how the word fruit is used in the Greek, in the main scriptures for today's message found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and I've got, got this day. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5, verse Capítulo 5, versículos 22 y 23. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us read the scriptures. Follow along as I read them to you. Or read them on the screen. Hallelujah. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amen. Against such there is no law. Amen. <clears throat> so the Greek word for fruit used in verse 22 is karpos. Can everyone say karpos? En griego, todos digan karpos. 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 Es lo que fruto en griego significa es carpos, okay? Which literally means or figuratively means fruit. Que simplemente significa fruto. Carpos significa fruto. Es lo que en griego significa. Amen. Amen. So according to these scriptures, brothers and sisters, and these Greek definition, the fruit, which is singular. It's the work of God, the Holy Spirit, in the life of the believer. It's simply the work of the Lord working through us. Amen? Amen. 
It is God, the Holy Spirit, that grows each fruit individually. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. It is God, the Holy Spirit, that grows each fruit individually. Amen? In the believer. Es el, el Espíritu Santo, Dios, el Espíritu Santo que trabaja individualmente cada fruto en, 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 en las vidas de, de, de su gente. Amen? Praise the Lord. He works in the hearts and lives of the believers. So, how does God help this fruit grow in the hearts and lives of believers? So, ¿cómo, cómo que es como Dios trabaja para este, ayudar a crecer el fruto en los corazones y vidas de su gente, de los creadores, del Señor? How does this all work? ¿Cómo todo esto trabaja? Well, first of all, according to Jesus, believers are the branches connected to the vine. Amen. Primero que Jesús dice es que los creadores son las ramas que están conectado al, al vine. Okay? And how many know what a vine is? Right? Exactly. The grapes. Right? Or anything has vines. It grows from the ground. Right? And it comes from a solid root. We are to be rooted in Christ. We are, to, we are those branches that should be connected to the vine, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a vine. Amen? Second of all, believers must remain in the vine in order for fruits of the Spirit to grow and manifest within them and through them. Amen? Tenemos que quedarnos en, en el vine para que el fruto crezca. Tenemos que quedarnos en Cristo para que el fruto crezca. Amen? So, who is the vine? Well, let's look at what Jesus says in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 1 through 6. Vamos a entrar a las escrituras de Juan, capítulo 15, versículo 1 y 6, para descubrir quién es el vine. It says, I am the true vine. Amen? So, who is the true vine? Jesus. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. <laughs> Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen? It says, verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. Jesus here is telling to abide in Jesus. Abide in him. Abide in me and I in you. Jesus is to remain in us and we in him. Amen. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Amen. Verse 5, versículo 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can't do anything. Sin yo, sin Cristo, no puedes hacer nada. No puedes, no puedes crecer fruto sin yo, es lo que Jesús dice. You can't do nothing without me. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Amen? Versículo 6 describe que lo que pasa a los que no viven su vida en Cristo, que no tienen Cristo en ellos y ellos no están en Cristo. Versículo 6 describe lo que le pasa a una persona. Ayúdanos, Señor. Here Jesus says that He, God the Son, is the true vine. 
And God the Father is the farmer who cultivates the fruit in the vine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a, what a perfect combination, isn't it, brothers? How God works through us, through the Son, and through Him, the Father. Hallelujah. Only through the work of God, the Holy Spirit in the heart and the life of the believer, can God the Father do the farming work, described in verse 2, of cultivating the fruit in the believer, the branch that is connected to God, the Son, Jesus Christ, the vine. Praise the Lord. We are to be connected to God, the Son, Jesus Christ, the vine. Amen. Jesus describes the Father cutting off the branches or the believers that are not fruitful. He also describes that, that the Father cleaning, that the Father cleaning or pruning the branches or the believers that are fruitful so that they be so that they may be more fruitful. Amen? That is what the, what the Father does. He's the husbandsman. He prunes the fruitful so that we may be more fruitful. Praise the Lord. That's how God does. That's how He works it in and through our lives. Así es como el Señor trabaja en las vidas de, las, de su gente. Los que no, son, no tienen fruto los corta. Los que tienen fruto este, este, corta un, un poquito de los lados. Los, los, las, las, es casi como el Señor es, es nuestro este, moldador. Él, él, él rasca una parte que no está bien y lo hace suave. Así es como el Señor es como nosotros. Para que podamos crecer, para tener más fruto en nuestras vidas. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is who the Lord is. This is how the Father cultivates the fruitfulness of the believer. Jesus further stresses the importance in verse 4 and 5. That without him, a believer cannot be fruitful. Sin de Cristo, un creador no puede tener fruto. No puede crecer fruto sin el Señor. Amen? Praise the Lord. One must abide or remain in Jesus in order to be fruitful. Jesus gives a warning that any believer who does not abide or remain in him will be cut off like a useless branch and will wither away. Every time that, that we stray away from God and we get into trouble, we feel as if everything is over, doesn't it? It feels like we wither away. The farther we stray away from God, the more we wither away. And the more the world destroys us, the more we destroy ourselves, the more we get ourselves into destruction. Right? But the more that we get closer to God and remain in God, and remain in Christ, and Christ remains in us, the more we bear fruit. Amen? Praise the Lord. Jesus gives us a warning that any believer who does not abide or remain in him will be cut off like a useless branch and will wither away. Such branches will be gathered into a pile to be burned. Amen? That's what Jesus says. So que el Señor dice. Lo que le pasa a los que se alejan más lejos de Dios. Se ponen, y lo más que se alejan del Señor, más débil se hace. Más destrucción, destrucción viene. Más problemas viene. Pero lo más junto que nos ponemos cerca al Señor, lo más que Cristo que queda en nosotros y nosotros en el Señor, más fruto viene en nuestras vidas. Praise the Lord. So how can a believer remain in Jesus and be fruitful? Well, according to John chapter 15, verse 7 through 14, Juan 15, versículo 7 al 14, a believer must do the following in order to remain in Jesus and, and, fru and be fruitful. Estos versículos van a enseñar cómo te te tenemos que parnecernos en Cristo y ser fructuosos. ¿Verdad? Cómo mantener con fruto. Cómo parnecer, cómo estar en Cristo y Cristo en nosotros. ¿Verdad? It says, if ye abide in me, Okay, versículo 7. If ye abide in me, and my words, mis palabras, se quedan en ti. 
and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Praise the Lord. It shall be done unto you. Versículo 8, verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So the reason why that we are to bear much fruit and we are remain in Christ and Christ remain in us so that we may bear much fruit is to so that the Father may be glorified. Es porque el Señor sea glorificado. Es todo por la gloria de Dios de pertenecer en Cristo y nosotros y Cristo pertenecer en nuestras vidas y y traer más fruto es todo para la gloria del Señor. Amen. Amen. So shall you be my disciples. So people can see that we are indeed the disciples of Christ. Para que la gente del mundo sepa que somos discípulos del Señor. Amen. Verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. Pertenece en mi amor. Igual como... Igual como el Padre me ha amado a mí, y igual como yo te he amado a ti, también pertenece en mi amor. Amen. It says, versículo 10, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. Tenemos que ser obede obede esto, obedientes para pertenecer en el amor del Señor. Amen. Verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. Yo te estoy hablando estas cosas, el Señor nos está hablando estas cosas, para que mi, 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 este, mi, uh, mi paz, ¿cómo se dice joy en español? Gozo, pertenece en ti. Praise the Lord, so that my joy may remain in you. I speak my words. I speak the word of God so that my joy remains in you. Yo estoy hablando mis palabras, que es la palabra de Dios, para que mi gozo pertenece en ti. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it says, and that your joy might be full. Praise the Lord. So nuestro gozo sea lleno de gozo. Para que nuestras vidas en Cristo sean más gozosos. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 12. This is my commandment. Este es mi mandamiento. That you love one another as I have loved you. Que tú amas, que tú amas a tu prójimo como yo te he amado a ti. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Great love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Praise the Lord. Tú eres mi amigo, si tú me haces caso de este mandamiento. Amen. Que no es, que no nuestro Señor Jesucristo, nuestro gran amigo, perdió su vida para nosotros. Qué gran amor de un amigo. Qué gran ejemplo ¿verdad? del Señor. El gran amigo de morir por nuestros pecados. <coughs> what greater show of, of friendship and love of friendship than what Jesus Christ did for us? Right? Our friend, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died for our sins. What greater love than that? What Jesus is trying to say here is that we are to do the same for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are to do the same for others as well. Love one another. Amar a cada uno. Si hay, si, este, si, se, si se viene a ese momento, morir por, por, por el nuestro prójimo. Como yo morí por ti. Amen? That doesn't mean you just gotta jump in there without the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right? Same thing when you see a child about to get run over. If you knew you got the opportunity to go and the God leads you right away, you get right in front and, and save that child and push him away. Right? I don't know anyone who wouldn't want to do that, save a child's life. Especially the child that's not yours. What greater love than that, than that right? Praise the Lord. So here, the central theme that Jesus expresses 
is agape love or the love of God. So, lo que Cristo está aquí centralmente expresando es el amor de Dios. El amor de Dios. Expresar nosotros el amor de Dios a nuestro prójimo. Right? Praise the Lord. Just like the Father loves Jesus, so does Jesus loves the believer and should remain in his love by remaining in the words of God. Remaining in his words. Amen? Praise the Lord. Keeping his commandments and obeying his commandments. What greater love is that too? If we say that we love God, we remain in his words, we keep his commandments, and we obey his commandments. Si de veras amamos al Señor, pertenecemos en la, en la palabra de Dios, este, este, obedecemos la palabra de Dios y mantenemos en la, en la palabra de Dios en nuestros corazones también. Y vivimos la palabra de Dios, ¿verdad? Amen. Praise the Lord. Just as Jesus does for the Father and remains in his love. Amen. All true believers who obey whatever Jesus commands them to do are the friends of Jesus. Amen. Just as Jesus loves all believers, they should love each other also. Amen. They should love their family, their friends, their neighbors, and strangers as themselves. Amen. Amar a su prójimo como uno se ama uno cada, cada uno. A sí mismo, ¿verdad? Just as God loves, just as a father loves Jesus and Jesus loves us and we love ourselves, we are to love others as well. Amen. See, it all connects to God. Right? It all connects to God. Amen. It all connects to the Father. Todo se conecta al, 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 a nuestro Padre. En los cielos, que está en los cielos, ¿verdad? Amen. Praise the Lord. All true believers who obey whatever Jesus commands them to do are the friends of Jesus. Jesus, as just as Jesus loves all believers, they should love what each other also. They should love their family, and like I said, everyone, uh, even the, the stranger. As hasta un extranjero también tenemos que amar también. Alguien que no conocemos. Amen. They should love their family and everyone else. Just as Jesus laid down his life on the cross at Calvary for his friends whom he loves, all believers must also, if they are led by the Holy Spirit, lay down their lives for their family, friends, and neighbors and strangers whom they love. Remember, we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, right? Amen. We do it out of God's love. Lo hacemos por el amor de Dios. Por expresar el amor de Dios. Eso es central en muchas de las palabras de Dios. Amen. Did he say that, that, that these two greatest commandments, love the, love, uh, love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy heart, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and love thy neighbor as thyself, these two greatest commandments, encompass all the law, right? In other words, the love of God, the love for God, and the love for the self and for others fulfills the law. It's central to the word of God. It's central to the teachings and doctrine of God. It's central to the teachings and the way we live. God's love is central over everything. Right? When we speak the word of God to others, we are to speak love as well. It needs to be the center in our heart. Amen? Amen. Love for mankind. Love for each other. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. For this is how all believers can remain in Jesus and be fruitful by loving God, by remaining in his words, keeping his commandments and obeying his commandments in order to remain in his love by loving themselves, loving people, and showing their love for them. When a believer does this, the Father is glorified and the believer is called a disciple of Christ. Again, everything is to bring honor and glory to God. Hallelujah. Expresando también el amor de Dios a, a nuestro prójimo es también para traer gloria al Señor. Amen. Amen. Again, it all connects to the Father. It connects to God. Amen? It's to bring the Father glory. To bring glory to Christ. 
Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus tells us all of this is so that his joy may remain in us and so that our joy in him will always be full. Praise the Lord. Todo eso lo que el Señor nos está diciendo es para que tendramos ese gozo y nuestro gozo sea lleno todo el tiempo en nuestras vidas. Amen. So our joy may be full. God's joy may be full in and through us. So people may see the joy that we express. God's joy through us. So they may uh, desire that same joy in the times of tribulation, in the times of trouble. Ese gozo que Dios está hablando aquí, está hablando durante los tiempos más difíciles, todavía teniendo el gozo del Señor en nuestras vidas. Pase lo que pase, bueno y o malo. Tribulación o tormentas. Tener ese gozo. Even through storms, still have that joy. Still have that peace, that prince of peace. Have the prince of peace and joy. The God of joy and peace in our lives. Amen? Another thing that should fill us with joy is what Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 16. Otra cosa que los, que, tenía que, que los tenía que llenar de gozo es lo que Jesús dijo en Juan capítulo 15, versículo 16. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. We are the chosen people of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And ordain you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whosoever ye that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name. Oh, praise the Lord, how powerful the name of Jesus is. Que poderoso el nombre de Jesús es. Es por eso dice, lo que tú le preguntas al Padre en mi nombre, Él te lo dará. He will give it to you. Hallelujah. Que poderoso el nombre del Señor es. Praise the Lord. Here, Jesus desires for all of us who are in the true, chosen, ordained believers, disciples of Christ, to always grow in fruitfulness so that we may remain fruitful in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Therefore, fruit that grows in the vine must remain in the vine. En otras palabras, fruto para que crezca tiene que, tiene que crecer en, en, en Cristo y parte en este. Este parte es, uh, quedarse en Cristo. Amen? In other words, a believer's fruit of the Spirit that grows in Christ must remain in Christ. But in order for believer's fruit of the Spirit to grow and remain in Christ, one must also walk and live in the Spirit daily. Para, pero para que este fruto siga creciendo en Cristo, uno tiene que, uno tiene que también Caminar en el Espíritu cada día. ¿Verdad? El fruto del Espíritu también tiene que caminar en el Espíritu cada día. One must walk in the Spirit daily, right? Yes, we must live the Christian life. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. We must live that fruitful life of the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. Amen? Daily. Walking and living in the Spirit daily will cause the fruit of the Spirit to be regularly manifested in the life of the believer. Of course, such fruit cannot be produced by the flesh nor by human nature, which is sinful, because if anyone did, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21, they would not inherit the kingdom of God. If we do anything in the flesh, it's sin. We cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Si nosotros tratamos de hacer nuestro, el fruto en, en la carne, es un pecado y no iremos al cielo, al reino del Señor. Mira lo que Galatas dice en capítulo 5, versículo 19 y 21. Dice que no, que no entraremos en el reino del Señor si tratamos de vivir en la carne. ¿Ok? Says, now the works of the flesh, los Las obras de la carne. Okay? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, 
strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, rebellings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen? Obviously, people who commit any sin and never repent will never inherit the kingdom of God. Obviamente, hermanos, cualquier persona que siga y siga cometiendo pecado y no se arrepiente nunca van a entrar al reino del Señor. Amen? But if they repent, seek His forgiveness, and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives, then they will be saved and have eternal life and have the Holy Spirit working in them and through them daily in order to walk and live by the Spirit, by the Spirit, by the Spirit. Hallelujah. According to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18 says, This I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Isn't that God's perfect formula? To not walk in the flesh? It says, walk in the Spirit, so, so that you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right? That's God's perfect prescription to live a Christian life. Esa es, el, esa es el, la, el, la formula con, este, perfecta del Señor para no andar caminando en la carne. Dice, caminar en el Espíritu para que no cumplas el, este, los deseos de la carne. Sí, señor, It says, for the flesh lusted against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, contrary to one another. So that ye cannot do these things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Praise the Lord. Those who walk in the Spirit are no longer under the law. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When a believer consistently walks and lives in the Spirit daily without fail, he or she does not fall for the sinful desires of the flesh. Even though the flesh is in constant fight against the Spirit, the believer, through the Holy Spirit's work and God's strength and power, is able to rebuke the devil and the flesh so that he or she does not sin. Praise the Lord. Con la ayuda del Señor, con el poder del Espíritu Santo, no cumpliamos las obras de la carne. Si, con, si sigamos caminando por la obra del Espíritu Santo, por el guía del Espíritu Santo, caminar en el Espíritu Santo. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the way the Holy Spirit fights against the flesh so that the believer will not sin. A believer who is led by the Spirit and therefore walks and lives in the Spirit is not under the law. Los que caminan bajo el Espíritu Santo no están bajo la ley de Moisés. This is because sin does not have dominion over the believer. Eso es porque el pecado no tiene dominio sobre el Creador. Según Romanos capítulo 6, versículo 14 y 15, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 14 through 15. This is because here she is under grace. Es porque está en bajo gracia, la gracia de Dios. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. In other words, just because we are under grace does not mean, God forbid, that we co continue on committing sins against God. God forbid that we do that. Just because we use that as an excuse to continue to sin because we are under grace. No, we don't do that. The, but the sin has no more power and dominion over them. We must remember that. El, el pecado, los creadores verdaderos, no tiene dominio sobre, la, sobre nosotros. Amen. No más porque estamos bajo, bajo gracia no significa que tenemos que continuar pecando contra Dios. No es una excusa abusando la gracia del Señor. Amen. Just because a believer is under grace does not mean he or she can knowingly and purposely sin. For such a person is weak and will not inherit the kingdom of God if there is no repentance. 
A believer who is strong, on the other hand, knows not being knows that not being under the law, but under grace, means that sin has no dominion over him or her. Hallelujah. Which also means that he or she will have no problem with God's help rebuking the devil and the and, and the flesh. This means that the believer will grow more in love and joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and meekness and temperance every day because we're all, because we know the sin has no longer dominion over us. We're under grace and then therefore we live righteously. Therefore our fruit of the spirit and therefore we allow the Holy Spirit to work the fruits of the spirit. A love of joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance every day of our lives. That means that fruit will grow according to Galatians chapter 5 verse 25 by walking and living in the spirit. It says if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us allow the Holy Spirit work in us and through us daily so that each fruit of the spirit may grow in us and through us as we live and walk in the spirit. Yes, Amen. Number three. Fruitful characteristics that grow in the believer. <clears throat> Talking about the fruit of the Spirit, let us go through each one. Now notice that the first one is love. Ahora estamos hablando de cada fruto. El primero es amor. ¿Por qué amor es, es principal? Porque sin amor los demás no significan nada. ¿Verdad? Amor de Dios tiene que ser central en todo lo que hacemos. De ahora adelante. ¿Eh? El amor de Dios. Hay una razón por qué amor es primero. ¿Verdad? Amen. God's agape love. Now notice that the first one is love, which is God's agape love. There's a reason I believe Jesus mentioned that one first. This is because love is the central theme above all else in, two, in the two greatest commandments given to us by Jesus according to Mark chapter 12, verse 30 to 31. Yo creo por lo que Jesús dijo... En Marcos, San Marcos, capítulo 12, versículo 30 y 31. Amen. Praise the Lord. According to the word of the Lord, it says, And thou shalt, it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Okay? And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Ok, ese es el mandamiento, los gran, dos grandes mandamientos de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Amar al, 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 a Dios con todo nuestro corazón, con toda nuestra alma, con toda nuestra mente y con toda nuestra fortaleza. Ese es el primer mandamiento y el segundo es igual. Amar a nuestro, a nuestro prójimo como a nosotros, como a sí mismo. No hay otro mandamiento más grande que estos, más importante, más central que estos dos. Right? Love for God and love for mankind. That is what's central. That's what I believe is number one in the fruits of the Spirit. Without love, the rest of them is worthless. It's meaningless if there's no love in it. If I preach the word of God and I have not love in my heart, it means anything, nothing. It is empty. <coughs> Amen? Believe me, I have love for mankind. I have love for, for you people, for our brothers and sisters here. I have love for, the, for his church. I have love for God first. I love for myself and I love for mankind. Amen? Ese es el orden del amor de Dios. Amor por el Señor, amor por sí mismo y amor por la gente. Los perdidos y la familia y todos. El enemigo... Los que los han hecho mal, amor por ellos también. ¿Verdad? Eso es central. Tiene que centrar en todo lo que hacemos. Pero si no, si no es central, si yo predico y no tengo amor en mi corazón, no significa nada, es vacío. Nomás son puras palabras. Si no hay amor en mi corazón. If there's no love in my heart. It's just empty words that I'm speaking. If I have not love in my heart. But I do. And I love every single one of you. You know it. I pray for you every day. I, I pray I pray the prayers of intercessions for each and every one of you. Amen. And brothers as well. 
On these two commandments of love hang all the law and the prophets. Love is to be the first and central thing in everything we do for Christ. Love is to be the first and central fruits of the Spirit manifested in and through the believer before any others. Without love, the others mean nothing. They're just empty words, empty actions, right? If we have that love. Praise the Lord. The Apostle Paul echoed the same sentiment according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, about love being greater than the gifts of the Spirit. It says, and now abided faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Charity here means agape love. The love of God. Más mira lo que 1 Corintios capítulo 13, versículo 13 dice que lo más grande de todos estos es el amor de Dios. Charity. El amor de Dios. Everyone here say the love of God. El amor del Señor. El amor de Dios, ¿verdad? Es central, hermanos. Central. Praise the Lord. Love is to be the first and central and greatest of all fruits of the Spirit, greater than any gifts of the Spirit, and greater than any other teachings from the law and the prophets. Without love, everything else is useless and in vain. Again, if all this preaching that I'm doing all these years, if I have not love in my heart, it is just in vain. It's just empty words, and it's not filled with the Spirit. But I love God, and I try my best to serve Him. And I try my best to pray for you. And I pray my hardest to preach the word of God with love and boldness and with truth. That is my heart's desire. Porque yo tengo el amor de, 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 por, por Dios y por yo mismo y por la gente en mi corazón. Y yo trato de vivir una vida ejemplar lo mejor que yo pueda. No soy perfecto, pero yo trato y el Señor sabe que yo trato. And the Lord knows I try. Love is, should be central. Greater than any other teachings of the law. Without love, everything else is useless and in vain. Once love has been manifested in and through the believer, then the next fruit of the Spirit, like joy, can now begin to take root in the heart and life of the believer. Ok, primero, y ahora que ya tienes el amor de Dios en tu corazón, entonces ya este, otros, otros frutos como, como este gozo comienza a crecer y tomar raíz en tu corazón, ¿verdad? Amor primero, y después eso crece profundamente otros frutos también, ¿verdad? Y es todo el trabajo del Señor, tenemos que dar toda la gloria al Señor. A mi Señor yo le doy honra y gloria por el trabajo que está haciendo en mi vida. Amen. Glory to God that in each and every one is working the fruit of the Spirit. Right? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It is through the work of the Holy Spirit. It's all through the work of the Holy Spirit. Joy can only come from one person. According to John chapter 17 verse 13. And now I come. It says now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world that they may that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He's talking about the joy of Jesus, el gozo de Jesús. ¿Verdad? El gozo de Jesús. No más viene de una persona, ¿verdad? El gozo viene del Señor. Amen. Amen, amen. This joy is true joy because it comes from the joy of Jesus Christ. Este gozo es verdadero gozo porque viene del gozo del Señor. Amen. Amen. The third fruit of the Spirit is peace. El tercer fruto es paz. Peace also comes, only comes from Jesus, according to John chapter 14, verse 27. El, la paz también viene de, de Jesucristo, según Juan 14, 27. Mira lo que dice, look what it says. Peace, as, notice how he said that verse. He said, peace, acuer, uh, toman en, en cuenta que él dijo paz. La primera palabra de ese versículo dijo paz. ¿Eh? Paz, yo te dejo a ti. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, 
give I unto you. In other words, Jesus doesn't give us the peace of the world. He gives us His peace. Hallelujah. The long everlasting peace of God. Hallelujah. Not the world's peace. He gives us His peace. Aquí dice que el Señor no lo da el, el paz del, del mundo que, que ofrece. Él nos da el paz de Él. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Él nos da el paz de Él. That's why he says, let, let not your heart be troubled, neither let be afraid, because I give you my peace, not the peace of the world. Es por eso que dice que no tenga, que, que tu corazón no esté, este, 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 que no tenga problemas, que no te sientas mal, que no estás este, estresado en tu corazón, no te sientas ansiedad en tu corazón, porque yo no te ofrezco la, la paz del mundo, yo te doy mi paz en tu corazón. Amen. So no tengas miedo. No, no temas en tu corazón. No tengas miedo en tu corazón. Amen. There should be no reason for any believer to be troubled and afraid about anything because Jesus, the Prince of Peace, has left us and given us His peace in our hearts. Amen. The fourth fruit of the Spirit is long suffering. El, el cuarto fruto es. Yo creo que es este, paciencia. O poder aguantar. No sé cómo dice en español, pero en inglés es long suffering. Paciencia, poder aguantar, tolera, tolerancia del Señor, ¿verdad? This is another fruit that only comes from God. Este es otro fruto que viene de Dios. Según Romanos capítulo 3, 25. According to Romans 3, 25. For which the Holy Spirit must work to grow in, in, in it, the believer. It says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. La tolerancia del Señor, ¿verdad? La tolerancia del Señor. Just like God had long suffered through the setting of Jesus to shed his blood and die on the cross for our sake, we are to display the fruits of long suffering to people we deal with every day. Así como Dios aguantó ver a su hijo morir, ser este sangrado y matar en, en la cruz, tenemos, nosotros tenemos que hacer lo mismo, aguant, este, tener tolerancia por la gente que nosotros este, estamos cada día. ¿Verdad? Tolerancia. El fruto de tolerancia. ¿Verdad? Amen. Number five, the fruit of the spirit, gentleness. El número el quinto, fruto. No sé cómo se dice en español, so, perdóname. El, el quinto fruto, gentleness. ¿Ok? Suave, ¿verdad? Ser suave con la gente, ¿verdad? Yo creo que así es lo más o menos. Este, all believers should be clothed with gentleness, according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Ahora estamos en Colosenses, capítulo 3, versículo 12, que anda hablando de, de, la, de, de, la, de gentleness, el fruto. It says, put on therefore, dice que te lo pongas, ok? It says, put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, which is gentleness, ok? And long suffering. Okay? Gentleness should be evident in all believers and should be expressed to all the people one meets, according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. El, aquí, el fruto de gentleness, cada creador del Señor tiene que, que, lo tiene que manifestar, ¿verdad? Manifestar. Según lo que Filipenses capítulo 4, versículo 5 dice. It says, Let your moderation, which is gentleness, be known unto all men. Okay? The Lord is at hand. Yes, it is. palabras, nosotros queremos que expresar y manifestar este quinto fruto en frente de toda la gente. ¿Verdad? Amen. Gentleness is especially helpful for the believer and a hostile person. A gentle answer or reaction towards the angry person can go a long way in diffusing the situation. Gentleness turns away wrath. Amen? Praise the Lord. This is un gran fruto. Puede calmar una situación este, muy grave. Cuando estás a, a, este, uh, hablando con una persona y esa persona está muy enojado, 
si tienes ese fruto, puedes calmar a esa persona. Puedes calmar la, la, la situación. Si sabes cómo hablar y, 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 y convivir con la gente. ¿Verdad? Es un gran fruto también. The fruit. The next fruit is the fruit of goodness. ¿Ok? El, el sexto fruto del de espíritu es <coughs> ser una buena persona. ¿Ok? Ser bueno. Goodness. All believers should trust in the goodness of the Lord. Estamos hablando de, 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 de la... Qué gran bueno Dios es. Porque, porque, porque el que es bueno es el Señor, ¿verdad? The one that is good is God. According to Psalms 38, verse 8. Según lo que Salmos 34, versículo 8 dice. It says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him who is good. Amen? Believers should also trust that the Holy Spirit will work in them and through them so that the fruit of goodness may grow in them and through them as they live and walk in the Spirit. Of course, living and walking in the fruit of the Spirit of goodness means, according to Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, that it must be manifested in the believer, through the believer, unto all men with words and actions. Okay? No lo más es hablar cosas buenas también este, activarlas en tu vida cosas buenas caminar cosas buenas no más hablar cosas buenas o ser bueno o decir que eres bueno es caminar bueno caminar en el espíritu verdad en el fruto del espíritu walk in the spirit walk in that fruit of the spirit of goodness help us the Lord Gal Galatos Galatos capítulo 6 versículo 10 dice eso as we have therefore opportunity cuando tenemos la oportunidad Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Cuando hay oportunidad, ¿verdad? Cuando es guiado del Espíritu Santo, cuando hay oportunidad, ¿verdad? Hay que ser buenos a toda la gente, especialmente a la gente de la fe, a los cristianos. Let us be good. Isn't there, have you, have you ever heard in other churches and in other situations where even your own people, your own uh, brothers and sisters can do you wrong? Or oh, whether well, it's division. It shouldn't be that way, brothers and sisters. Here it says that we are to be good, especially to the, those in the household of faith. ¿Qué no han oído situaciones entre los hermanos y hermanas? Hay ido conflicto y uno me ha tratado mal o otro que así. Eso no se tiene que pasar, hermanos. Aquí dice que tenemos que ser buenos hasta la, hasta toda la gente, pero también especialmente a la gente de la fe de Cristo. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whether people hate you or love you, you must be good to them. O sea que si alguien te ama o te odia, tenemos que ser buenos con esa gente. También. Tenemos que ser buenos con esa gente. No hay otra opción, hermanos. Jesús no nos da otra opción. Orar por él, por ellos, amar a ellos y ser buenos a ellos. ¿Verdad? Señor God does not give us no other option. Because he is good to us. Amen. Right? He is the one we need to emulate to, for us to be good. For us to uh, have the fruits of the Spirit, to express it. Es Dios que tenemos que mirar lo que, que bueno es Dios para que nosotros ser buenos a, a los prójimos también. ¿Verdad? Okay. <clears throat> the seventh fruit of the Spirit is faith. Es el séptimo fruto del Espíritu es que fe, ¿verdad? El fruto de la fe es muy importante también. El fruto de la fe. There are five things that believers must know as the Holy Spirit works to grow their faith in them and through them. First, faith, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, comes by hearing the word of God. La, hay cinco cosas que cada creador del Señor tiene que saber de fe. La primera es lo que Romanos capítulo 10, versículo 17, dice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dice que, que tenemos que, 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 fe, que la fe viene de oír la palabra de Dios. Amen. Esa es la primera cosa que tenemos que saber. La fe viene de oír de la palabra de Dios. 
crece en oír la palabra de Dios. Amen. Let us go to this. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Second, segundo. Faith, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Se, segunda vez, fe. Según Efesios, capítulo 2, versículo 8. Fe es un, es un don del Señor. It's a gift of God. Okay, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Amen? It is the gift of God. It is very important that the word the is there. It says, It is the gift of God. It is el don del Señor que nos da a nosotros. By knowing our saving faith comes from God alone, it should encourage Christians, according to Romans chapter 2, chapter 12, verse 3, to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think, but also remember that God decides the measure of faith each one receives. Sabiendo que, que nuestra fe viene del Señor lo más, te, nos tiene que este, dar este, más este... este los tiene que uh, ayudar a entender que según Romanos capítulo 12, versículo 3, que, que no va a pensar en nosotros más que otra gente, ¿verdad? Porque tenemos tanta fe. ¿A que no decir, yo tengo más fe que tú? ¿A que no, eso los ayuda a no pensar más que otra gente, ¿verdad? Pero, pero también acordarnos que Dios es, que los, Dios es el que nos da la fe a cada uno. Él es el que nos da un cierto porción de fe a cada uno. Uno tiene un poco de fe, como el mustard seed, como la semilla, ¿verdad? Otros tienen un gran fe, otros tienen fe en el medio, pero me entienden. Dios es el que nos da la medida de fe a cada uno. Amen. Look what it says. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay? The Apostle Paul gives an example according to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13 through 14, of godly humility believers should have when they contemplate their own faith. Aquí Apostle Paul da un ejemplo en, en capítulo 1 Timoteo, 1 Timoteo, capítulo 1, versículo 13 y 14. Eh, como este, este, creados humillados, tiene, como uno tiene, con, tiene que contemplar su propio fe. Ok? It says, Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and an injurious? But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Es en Cristo Jesús. It's because of, it's in Christ Jesus that we have that measure of faith. Amen. Nuestra fe es en Cristo. Eso es lo que tenemos que contemplar. Que nuestra fe es en Cristo. Y cada uno tenemos una medida de fe. Gracias a Dios que tenemos algo de fe. Thank God that we have some kind of faith. Hallelujah. No matter what kind. No matter what level of faith. Of faith of mustard seed. Thank God. If you have a, a, a little bit more faith. Thank God. If you have great faith. Thank God. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Paul understood faith in Christ was given to him because of God's grace in spite of his own sinful life. Thirdly, they said, faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Tercer vez, fe es lo que Hebreos capítulo 11, 1 dice, que que fe es, el, la, este, es la evidencia que lo que no puedes ver y es el, uh, el substance of, hope, of things hoped for. Amen? It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Amen? Eso es lo que fe es también. Praise the Lord. It's the substance. It is the hope. Right? The hope we have in Christ. Jesus Christ is the hope. 
He is the substance. Our faith is the substance of things hoped for in Christ. The evidence of things not seen. Right? We know by faith that God created the heavens and the earth. We know by faith that Jesus Christ is God. We know by faith that every person in here has a worth. Amen? We know by faith that Christ is in this house. We know by faith of things not seen. And the substance of hope being of hoping for. Fourthly, <clears throat> faith when manifested in and through the believer with agape love before others, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7, believes in all things. We think the best of others. Fe también, hermanos, cuando es manifestado en nosotros y, este, en, y este, manifestado en frente de toda la gente con amor de Dios, según 1 Corintios capítulo 13, versículo 7, creen en lo mejor de todas las personas. Amén. Mira lo que dice. Lo que dice, mira. Bear all things, believing all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Ok, eso es lo que fe hace. Ok, praise the Lord. Y aquí dice, believe in all things, believe in all things. Amen. And finally, faith without works, according to James chapter 2, verse 6, is dead. Finalmente, fe sin, la, sin las obras que Dios nos manda a hacer, según Santiago, capítulo 2, 25, es muerto. Amen. Mira lo que dice. Look what it says. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Okay? En otras palabras, si tú dices que tú, que tú tienes tanta fe, pero no estás viviendo tu fe, es muerto. Es una vida cristiana muerta. Es una fe muerta si no estás viviendo tu fe. In other words, if you're saying and claiming that you have this great faith, but you're not living and working out your faith, then your faith is dead. Your Christianity is dead. Your, 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 your claim that you're a Christian is dead. We must live for Christ. We must live out our faith. Tenemos que vivir nuestra fe. Tenemos que hacer las obras por nuestra fe. Amen? Without faith, one can never please God. And without works, faith is dead. Sin la fe, uno no puede complacer al Señor. Y, y sin las obras, la fe es muerto. Amen? Now let's look at the eighth fruit. Vamos a, 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 ahora a la, a la octua, este. The eighth fruit of the Spirit, meekness. Okay? Ahora vamos a la próxima fruto, que es meekness, okay? Meekness, according to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, is precious in the sight of God. Ese es un fruto que es muy precioso en la vista del Señor. Según este 1 Pedro, capítulo 3, versículo 4, es muy precioso en, en la vista del Señor. Pero mira lo que dice. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. Amen? So, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, that's meekness, right? Which is in the sight of God a great price. Es muy valioso para el Señor. ¿Verdad? Tener un espíritu calmado, con paz, y sin sinceridad es muy valioso para el Señor este octavo este fruto ¿verdad? Amen. Amen. a believer that has developed meekness through the work of the Holy Spirit is willing to be submissive is humble and gentle relies on God and is dependent on Him to provide strength alguien que, 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 que este, tiene este fruto por medio del Espíritu Santo Está dispuesto a submitirse al Señor 
Subitirse bajo es la autoridad de un pastor o la autoridad de una policía, la autoridad del presidente o lo que sea, ¿me entiendes? Tiene, la, tiene humildad, tiene suavitud, ¿verdad? Depende completamente al Señor en todo lo que Él hace. Está completamente dependiente al Señor para que le dé fuerzas. El Señor, aleluya. That is what meekness, the fruit of the Spirit, meekness does. Total dependency and reliance on God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Bless, blessed he who is meek. Right? Bendecido sea los que son, que tienen este, este fruto. ¿Verdad? Bendecidos sean ellos. Amen. 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 The ninth fruit of the Spirit is temperance. El noveno fruto del Espíritu es, yo creo que es paciencia, o este, poder aguantar, no sé cómo se dice en español, el noveno este, fruto, pero es temperance. The Greek word for temperance is agrathia, which means self-control, tener este control, ¿verdad? Tener control en sí mismo. En cualquier situación, tener control. Whatever happens, have self-control. All right? A believer that has developed temperance or self-control has, according to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, a sound mind. Remember that scripture? Según este segundo Timoteo, capítulo 1, versículo 7, una persona que tiene control en sí mismo, tiene una mente en control, ¿verdad? Tiene un control, una mente que piensa correctamente, ¿verdad? Mira lo que dice, segundo Timoteo, versículo 1, 7, says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have the spirit. God gives us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. ¿Verdad? Amen. Praise the Lord. The word sound mind also has a similar definition in the Greek word sophronismos, which means the discipline of self-control. Ahora, te, este, esa palabra también, este, <clears throat> una mente en control, también en griego, este, en la palabra griego sophronismos, tiene un, un significado de, de tener una disciplina de control a sí mismo. Uno tiene que tener una disciplina, ¿verdad? Para tener control en sí mismo por medio del Espíritu Santo. Que es el trabajo del Espíritu Santo. We remember that's through the work of the Holy Spirit. Having the discipline of self-control. This discipline of temperance or self-control can only be given by God through the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer. Eso solamente se puede dar esta disciplina en, en control en sí mismo, en control de la mente. Solamente se, se puede dar por medio del trabajo del Espíritu Santo. A believer with this discipline is able to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and also live an upright and godly life. Una persona que tiene con esta disciplina de, de control sí mismo puede decir no a cosas que no son de Dios y, y pasiones del mundo pero también decir sí a la vida cristiana vivir correctamente en, el, en, la, en, la, en la vista del Señor ser obediente, obediente al Señor sí Señor, yo lo haré yes Lord, I will do Right? Who we'll say yes to the Lord and say no to ungodliness, right? That's what self-control is. And that's in and through the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, faith is, it says. Right? It's all the work of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, such fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, there is no law. Amen. This is because the law, according to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 through 11, was not made for the repentant born against believers, but it is made for the unrepentant sinner. Look what it says here. Amen. 1 Timoteo capítulo 1, versículo 9 a 11. Praise the Lord. It is the last scripture for today. Knowing this, sabiendo esto, that the law is not made for a righteous man. La ley de Moisés no está hecha para, para, para el hombre recto. Okay? But for the lawless 
and the disobedient, pero para los, para los incrédulos y para los desobedientes. For the ungodly and for the sinners. Para los que no creen en Dios y para los pecadores. For the unholy and the profane. For the murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. For manslayers. For the warmongers. For them that defile themselves with mankind. These are the people who commit homosexual acts. People that say that homosexuality, that the God is against homosexuality, is not in the Bible, they're wrong. Look what it says here. For them that defile themselves with mankind. How else can you defile yourself with mankind if you're doing uh, dirty stuff with the same sex? You're defiling yourself. You're defiling the, the, you defiling your, the body that God created in His image. Amen? Eso se trata de la homosexualidad. Él está contra eso también. Amen? And look what it says. For men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, si, si hay otra cosa que está contra el do, do, doctrina este, verdadera, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Amen? The law was made so that it can expose the law of Moses. Estamos hablando de la ley de Moisés, ¿verdad? The law of Moses was made so that it can expose the sin that it resides in the heart of people so that it would bring true conviction and true repentance in the heart of the, of the people. La ley de Moisés fue, fue creada, fue escrita para, para, para poder abrir la verdad del pecado del corazón de la persona. Para poder, poder abrir la verdad del pecado de la persona. Para descubrir, para poder saber qué pecado tú has hecho. Amén. Y para, para, y para que poder, para traer convicción y arrepentimiento en el corazón de la persona. That's what it says against such the fruit of the Spirit, there is no law. Because the law was made to expose the sin of, of the person, to bring to repentance and forgiveness. Es por eso dice que, que el fruto del Espíritu Santo no, no hay ninguna ley. Porque la ley fue hecha para, para abrir la verdad del pecado de la persona. Y para traerlos a convicción y arrepentimiento. Y últimamente, salvación y el regalo, el don de vida eterna. Yeah. This is why it's so important to us to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us so that each fruit of the Spirit may grow in us and through us. Es por eso es muy importante, hermanos. De, de, tenemos que dejar que el Espíritu Santo trabaje en, en nuestras vidas y por medio de nuestras vidas para que el, Espíritu, el, el, el fruto del Espíritu Santo crezca en nosotros y por medio de nosotros. Es muy importante. This is why it's so important for us to walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit so that we will not sin. Es por eso es muy importante que tenemos que, que, tenemos que caminar en el Espíritu Santo y vivir en el Espíritu Santo cada día para que no compli, este, cometimos, para no cometir pecado. Right? Quite simply. Walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit so that we will not sin. Right? Praise the Lord. As I conclude this message, I would like to stress today's main points. The fruit of the Spirit that each of us should manifest to others is love, joy, and peace, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, and meekness, and temperance. They're all important, but love has to be central over all of this. One way that a believer can develop each fruit is by allowing the Holy Spirit to work in his or her life. Fruit that grows must grow in the vine, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Remember, the branch must be, continue to be connected in the vine, which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus must remain in us and we must remain in Jesus. Right? Amen. 
fruit that grows in the vine, in the vine, must remain in the vine. Right? Fruto que crece en Cristo se tiene que pertenecer en Cristo. Se tiene que quedar en Cristo. Tiene que vivir en Cristo. Tiene que hablar y, y, y caminar. Y tiene que vivir en Cristo. Amen. Fruit further grows by walking in the Spirit and living in the Spirit through our words and our deeds. Right? Yes. These are the fruitful characteristics that will grow in the believer so long as they allow the Spirit to do His work. Amen. Tenemos que dejar el Espíritu Santo que trabaja en nuestras vidas para que este fruto del Espíritu Santo crezca en nuestras vidas para poder caminar, no más decir, pero caminar y vivir los frutos del Espíritu, ¿verdad? Amen. Amen. The Spirit's work is crucial to the life of the believer and to the church as a whole. El trabajo del Espíritu Santo es importante en la vida del, del, del Creador y también importante a la iglesia en completamente, ¿verdad? Es muy importante que esta iglesia camine en el Espíritu y viva en el Espíritu. Amen. It's very important. Let us, uh, let us stand this way. Vamos a parar de que. I opened the altar this morning to pray. For you to come before the Lord, for Him to ask, for, for you to ask Him, for you to petition the Lord to help you, and to help you in whatever fruit of the Spirit the Lord is helping you with. To come before the Lord, to open yourself to Him, and allow Him to, to, to begin working in you. You could have read in the hermanos, hermanas. Para que, Dios, para que le pidas al Señor, para que le hagas una petición, que Él te ayude, que Él comience a comenzar este, y trabajar en tu vida ese fruto que cada uno de nosotros tenemos que tener. Let us go to the altar this morning. Let us open our hearts to God. Let us open our, let us open our minds and our hearts to God. Heavenly Father, Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord Father. I pray that, that people come to the altar. I pray that people in, the, in, 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 in Facebook come to, to their prayer closet right now and come before you. And I pray that they open their hearts, that they open their minds, that, that they open themselves to you, Lord Father, to work, to begin a, a Holy Spirit work in their lives of each spirit, Lord Father, to grow, to begin the work of a spirit of love and of faith, hallelujah, and every single uh, fruit of the spirit that you taught us today, Lord Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you bless us, that you strengthen us, Lord Father. I pray that you just bless our minds, that you bless our souls, Lord Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. I pray that you help us, oh Lord, that to, to grow the spirit of, of love and the spirit of joy and the fruit of the spirit of peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith, Lord Father. Father, let it be that we that Father, let it be, Lord Father, as Jesus said, that, that come to me all you that are heavy laden and heavy labor, and I will give you rest, Father, hallelujah. And learn from my meekness, hallelujah, and my humbleness, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that, that we learn of the meekness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Help us grow our meekness as Jesus was meek. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that you help us in our temperance. That you help us deal with others. That you help us be. Uh, that you help us in our self control. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in Jesus' name <clears throat> that you help us grow each and every one uh, of these fruits individually, Lord Father. So that we can learn to deal with others. So we can learn to deal with our spouse. So we can learn to deal with our children, our small children, Lord. They help us learn how to deal with, with our co-workers. They help us learn with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. They help us uh, deal with our enemies. Uh, they can help us deal with our with our moms and our dads. They help us deal with each other, Lord Father. To, I pray that you, that you first begin to work in us the, 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 the love of God, Father, help help us grow our love for our support, for you first, to love you with all of our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, and love ourselves, and also love our neighbors as ourselves. Father, help us for love to be the central thing before anything else, Father. Help us grow our love 
or others to a father. No matter what happens, Father, I pray you help us grow. I, I love uh, 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 the spirit of joy. Father, I pray that, that your joy may be full in us, as the scripture says, to Father. Father, I pray also that you help that you work in us the peace of Jesus. Because Jesus says that peace I leave. I leave to you peace I give you, not as the world gives, but as I give to you. Hallelujah. Father, that I pray that this peace does not just uh, uh, takes away every fear and every doubt from our hearts. May the peace of God, may the peace of Christ give us peace in our hearts so to where we don't fear or have anxieties or depression in our hearts, Father. Father, let it be so that you help us work in our long suffering, hallelujah, to be able to deal with others and our gentleness, to be, to be able to diffuse uh, uh, difficult situations, Lord Father. Help us with the gentleness, oh Lord. Father, help us look towards the goodness of God. Help us look, help us look towards your goodness, Lord, so that we so we can model you, so we can be good to others as well, Lord Father. Father, let it be known that, that our faith, oh Father, that let us be thankful for the faith that you've given us. Whatever measure you give us, we each of we are to thank you for the, for the, for the faith of of, of, of a mustard seed to great faith, Lord Father. I pray in Jesus' name that you just help us grow the, the measure of faith that you that you uh, will for us to have, Lord Father. I pray in Jesus' name for, for, for all these requests, Lord Father, for all of our people. I pray for our church, Lord Father, to be to walk in the Spirit and, and live in the Spirit. Father, I pray so that so that this church and our people will not sin, Father. Father, I pray that you remind all of us. That sin no longer has dominion over us. Hallelujah. And we are thankful for that. We are thankful for your grace and for, the, and for your glory. We are thankful for your goodness, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, understand. Grow. Uh, help us grow in our faith. Help us grow in each of these fruits, O oh Father. But mainly our love for you, O oh Father. And we thank you for ourselves and love for others, O oh Father. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord.